This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. And you've probably already seen that Van Jones uh, clip by now talking about the implications of what message was sent uh, by the American people in the election of Donald Trump last night. I brought uh, in uh, Lisa Kinsella, a political st uh, analyst as well and strategist, as well as Doug Ford to hash out what your different perspectives are on what message was sent. Because some people see the election of Donald Trump as a sort of presidential seal uh, of approval on bigotry and racism, and others see it as a sort of a saying a goodbye to the establishment. Lisa, what's your, your perspective on this? Well, I think you're right on both counts. I think for sure this was an anti establishment vote. How Donald Trump is anti establishment, I'm not sure, but it also sent a clear message that being you know, a lying, sexist, bigoted, a sexual predator is more acceptable in the United States than being female. There was a huge undercurrent of sexism, both in the comments that were said that we all heard, and in the the, the latent sexism that's that's still pervasive that we have to work on. Do you buy that, Doug Ford? Well, I don't. I, those those are strong words. I I, I think uh, what trumps everything in the U.S. and I said excuse the pun about that, <laughs> but it's the economy. It's the uh, steel worker, the, uh, the coal miner in Pennsylvania that lost his job because Hillary Clinton closed down the coal mines. It was the auto industry in Michigan that uh, Ford and General Motors are billing, building billion dollar plants you know, 20 miles from the American border. It's the dairy farmer in Wisconsin. Uh, people were ticked off in the, in the U.S., but not there, but just right across the world, as I, as I was saying earlier to you. But would you accept that, that some of the, co the, the tone of the conversation that he laid out has created a channel of discussion that we would never have seen because the, the almost now president has mm -hmm. talked about women in a certain way, has talked about Muslims mm -hmm. in a certain way, has talked about black people in a certain way. Has this okayed that? Yeah, it's almost given license to it. And it was when Trump started uh, his, his bid for the presidency, and we saw it in the primaries, you know, we all had this kind of collective gasp, but we couldn't believe that someone who was trying to run for the highest office in the world was actually saying these things. And his, his comment was always that you know, he's not politically correct. Well, it's not about being politically correct. It's about being kind and compassionate. You brought some, uh, some stats here that show what, what, what do you think, who do you think is responsible for, for this election result? Well, the preliminary numbers show us that white men and white women are responsible for electing Donald Trump. And, you know, I went and I worked for Hillary Clinton, so uh, that's how I view it. But we do know that um, we had high numbers of uh, African Americans and Latinos who went out and supported Hillary, but predominantly it was the white men and white women who elected Donald Trump last night. And it was white men and white women that, in, that elected the first black president, uh, overwhelmingly. It wasn't just the African American vote, it was people in Iowa, people in Wyoming. <laughs> You know, that's who uh, elected and Donald decided Trump. Not to come out I mean, and sorry, for, Obama. And decided not to come out and vote for, for Hillary. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you both so much for your different thank you. perspectives. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.